16 students for the last uh, two and a half weeks of May in Norway above the Arctic Circle. So in the geology department, we have a long tradition of the Geology 310 trip. It's entitled uh, Regional Field Geology. But in the last few years, um, we've decided, as, as many of our research interests have taken us um, abroad, that we should also bring William Mary students so that they're not only getting an experience in the field, but they're also really being, uh, you know, um, introduced to very different and new cultures. So uh, Nick Velasio had worked in Norway for a number of years, uh, doing pretty exciting stuff, thinking about um, understanding climate and change from lake cores. And we thought that the Lofoten Islands, which are, again, above the Arctic Circle, uh, this really dramatic location where we could uh, showcase a lot of different geology to students, at the same time really getting them a sense of, uh, sort of what Norway is like. So the reason this area is interesting is because it's pretty far north. It's at about 68 degrees north latitude and um, it's at the intersection of some interesting ocean and atmospheric currents that uh, we're interested in looking at. It's their long-term variability and how that's changed over the past few hundred to the past few thousand years. Um, in addition to these, this sort of interesting climatic region, uh, there's also a long history of human settlement uh, dating back about um, you know, five to six thousand years and up until the Viking Age. And, you know, typically the lakes that we core, um, we can get sediment records that go back eight to ten thousand years. And we can analyze, when we take those back to the lab here at William & Mary, we can analyze the changes in those sediments and they reflect what's going on around those lakes, whether it's vegetation changes that are naturally occurring um, or whether there's human landscape changes um, that occur later on in the last few thousand years. Whenever this was deposited, this lighter colored layer, there was a glacier in the valley that the lake is in. Um, and then this transition here where it turns to brown uh, tells us that there's lake sediment. So we were coring lakes. So we would go out um, on these boats that um, we would take a big metal coring apparatus um, tied to ropes and then we'd drop it down into the bottom of the lake uh, and use it to pull back up the sediment that we were interested in getting. Really what we're looking for is salinity changes, so when the lakes were more marine they're going to have a lot more salt water, um, which are indicated by different um, proxies that we'll be looking at, and then as it transitions to a lake it's a lot more fresh water, and so those are the kind of changes that we're going to be looking for um, to kind of determine when these uh, changes were happening. I'm weighing out sample, and so I'm trying to put about five milligrams um, in each of these tiny little tin boats. We're interested in um, bits, parts of the sediment that are a certain size, okay. so we can um, pass it through the, this really fine mesh. This research is funded by the National Science Foundation, um, and they're support this project uh, because it's looking at the impact of climate and environmental changes on society. And I think the more perspectives that we can provide to that discussion, the better. And looking in the past is really sort of the key to understanding the present and the future. College 300 is, uh, the intention is really to get William Mary students sort of out and into the world, to go see a place that's not their backyard. So it's been a very nice uh, sort of uh, linking with what we want to do from a research and educational point of view to what the college is trying to do in, um, I think, broadening the education of our undergraduates.